Okay, we like it. Um, good morning, welcome to St. Old Elms um, for our Eucharist this morning, which I'll be celebrating here in the church building. I'm joined by my daughter and um, what's quickly becoming something of a church cat, uh, Tuto. Um, but we'll be joined as well by other people reading um, the Bible passages today. And wherever you are, and whether you're watching live or later, um, I hope and pray that this service that we share with you may be an encouragement and um, nourishment for the soul. If you find it helpful, to share bread or bread and wine with yourself or others in your home. And that helps you to engage in, as it were, spiritual communion, then feel welcome, but there's no obligation. But I believe we are very much united in Christ. And I feel somehow we sense that paradoxically all the more, because still we must continue to worship and gather in this virtual way. We hope that there'll be some further news change perhaps in the next few weeks, but until then. So I'm gonna begin by ringing the church bell. We ring the Angelus to announce the start of our service. Um, if you have a copy of the notes and readings for today, you can see the responses there, but I'll say them as well. So the, the Angelus, which reminds us that he's come amongst us. The angel of the Lord brought tidings unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that like as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now we'll, um, uh, behind the right page, we will have the hymn, um, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. To, there's several good tunes for this hymn, but this happens to be one of my favourites. Um, so I hope it'll be familiar to you. And uh, we'll see the words, I think, and, um, and be able to join in the singing, if you can, where you are, um, to this wonderful hymn.
Do you need to unmute me now, Gary? No, I think you're live. Oh, okay, thank you. So wherever we are, wherever you are, and whatever our circumstances, we gather as one in the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We call to mind our sins in sorrow and in penitence. And we'll hear again those words of assurance that through Christ, forgiveness and healing are ours. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, to receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect, the particular prayer for this, the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for the first of our readings from the prophet Jeremiah and the psalm which follows, we're going to go and join Wendy, where she is, Wendy Booth. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 10 to 13. This passage anticipates the gospel reading by offering us encouragement to be confident in God, who has called us to be his servants. At that time, Jeremiah said, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you, I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. And so we go on to some lines from Psalm 69. And the response is, answer me, O Lord. Answer me, O Lord. With your faithful help, rescue me 
from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. Answer me, O Lord. You know the insults I receive and my shame and dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Insults have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Answer me, O Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading. The second reading is from chapter six, Romans, where Paul, in his readiness to embrace suffering and death with Christ, enjoys a strange and wonderful freedom in which there is nothing to fear and live or die, all is gain in Christ. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to god so you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to god in christ jesus this is the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god. God. hear the gospel of our lord jesus christ according to matthew this passage carries on from last week's calling of the disciples by offering them and us both challenge and encouragement. Do not fear, your Lord God knows you and cares about you. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who could destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, 
Thanks. And my short um, address will refer to, I think, all three, all three of the readings. Because each Sunday, the readings for the Eucharist, they're more or less the same in the Anglican as in the Roman Catholic and some other denominations of the church all around the world. The readings for the Eucharist arrive for the preacher as for anyone attending as both a gift and a challenge. We don't choose them. Um, and therefore we seek to receive them with openness and humility, asking what is it that God may wish to tell us through these particular Bible passages? Some churches I know will understandably choose a series of readings, and that can be a very good thing to do as well. But there is this value, I think, in our Anglican and other churches' traditions of responding to and perhaps at times wrestling with, struggling with um, readings that are not our choice, but which are given to us to ensure that we through the course of a year or three years in our case, that we cover a whole wide range of scripture. The readings for today include a lament by Jeremiah. Now this notable prophet is someone who is prepared to say what he believes. And I think this is an, an important and valuable role, though not always appreciated by political leaders and others in authority. In any office or school or workplace and in the church as well, someone who is prepared to say what they think is often necessary and quite often unpopular. Jeremiah is able to do this a great personal cost because he believes in God. So for him, it doesn't matter so much what the king says. And for us, it doesn't matter so much what your boss says, or even perhaps, God bless him, my archdeacon, because we have a higher loyalty. It's God to whom we answer. And in the gospel reading, Jesus says, do not fear those, even those who may kill the body but they can't kill the soul. I think we live in a time of conformity and fear for all that it's somewhat disguised by a kind of bravado that might be reflected in our social media and so forth. In actual fact, I think we are in a time of some conformity and fear. For instance, many people have little or no security of employment or income. And it's not easy in those circumstances to protest against those in authority or to speak truth to power. But as Christians, we stand on ultimately secure ground. And I very much hope that the church might, in all circumstances and in all places, be safe ground for people to speak against all prejudice and injustice, even or especially when it's the church itself that is guilty of that. Today's Psalm expresses the anguish of one who feels powerless before the corrupt forces that are set against him or her, but they place their trust in God Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. And towards the end of the psalm, we read, The humble shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy and his own who are imprisoned. He does not despise. Those last words are not in today's portion of the psalm, but later in the same psalm. Nonetheless, 
it often seems as if the world is drowning in a sea of sin and falsehood. And at times it seems to as if my own life, I can only speak for myself, as if my own life may sink into hopelessness as well. Into this state of affairs, St. Paul declares with typical resoluteness, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. And again, we can see how by that belief, he was empowered to speak the truth as he saw it, even though he knew where it would lead him, ultimately to Rome, which he saw as a, a blessing, an opportunity to proclaim the gospel there at the nexus, at the very epicenter of the cultural world of his time, but also to where he was killed. Hence, our efforts to love, to forgive, to support and to encourage others, and to speak up for the poor and the marginalized. Let's believe and know that such efforts are never wasted. It doesn't so very much matter what the boss thinks. Because, as Jesus says again in our gospel reading, Whoever acknowledges me before others, Jesus says, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And who would you like speaking for you in heaven? Your boss, whose position needs to be challenged, or our Lord Jesus Christ? And Jesus also assures us that even the hairs of your head are counted. And how impressive is that after all these weeks without a visit to the barbers? And so he says, do not fear. My brothers and sisters, I, of course, don't know how it goes for you at present. What joys and thanksgivings there are within you, nor what afflictions there might be, grief, Poverty, family strife or breakdown of relationships or of anxiety or of shame. Each person's journey is unique to them. But the presence of Jesus with us on that journey is true and unfailing for all of us. Do not fear others, says Jesus today. And again, he says, because he knows how much we need to hear it. Again, he says in the same passage, do not fear. Consider a sparrow, small bird, so beautiful, perfect, tiny, fragile. And God knows each one intimately. Each of you is far more precious than than all the birds of the air. Not my words, but our Lord's. So my friends, whatever your journey, whatever, however it goes for you at present, be encouraged in your daily pilgrimage. Amen. Our profession of faith, to which the response to the uh, questions is, I believe and trust in him. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? 
I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our intercession um, will consist of two parts. I'm going to just simply read the names and particular concerns that have been added to our requests for prayers book, which is available in church again now, or requests can be sent to me by any means, um, excluding the two or three that either have been asked to be kept um, just to private, my private prayers, or that seem appropriate not to mention, and bearing in mind that these requests may be for people we know, but in all likelihood are for people elsewhere or people we don't know. So please don't be alarmed if you hear a familiar name, but, but aren't sure if it's the person you have in mind. It may well not be. Um, and then following that, we'll be hope, able to hear and join in singing the wonderful Teze Chorus, Oh Lord, hear my prayer. I hope I'll be muted during that because I'm bound to try my best to sing the bass part for it. It's a lovely meditative chorus. And that can be your, our collective time of prayer. And you might, of course, have other thoughts and requests in your prayers as we do so. But we're asked to pray for Elsie and Inez and all those who are desperately missing contact with family members. For Bill, rest in peace, who died very recently. Wendy, his widow. For Jackie Thomas and her sister, who is missing her. For Valentine and all his family. For Gladys Bugden, may she rest in peace. We pray for Karen, her granddaughter, who is one of our busybodies team of staff, who is very close to her indeed. Pray for Ben Hardy, Stephen Andrews, and their families. For Des Walker, amid much uncertainty and anxiety as he awaits a, a major procedure in hospital. Another I simply quote, please God save me from hell and bring me home. For Pam, whose husband has died very suddenly. For Maureen Blake. For Juan, who is very ill. And for Judith, his wife and Jackie Ree's sister. Another I simply quote, please pray for the strength to fight my alcoholism. For Lillian and Sue with cancer. For John Heaslip, supported at home after many work weeks in intensive care by his wife, Denise, and sister, Isabel. And I'll also say a prayer for um, Pam Christie. Um, and the flowers this morning that you may have seen in the background, they come from Pam's garden uh, uh, and from uh, David Reeves next door. So Dave's, Dave's picked them with Pam's um, agreement and, and enthusiastic uh, blessing. And so the flowers are a reminder for us to hold in our prayers, Pam, as well. So now we'll hear and can join in singing with or praying along with the chorus, O oh Lord, hear my prayer.
peace with ourselves, perhaps with each other remotely, and um, you know, perhaps you could even unmute us for a moment and uh, and have a bit of a a bit of a holy um, chaos for a moment, um, Gary. But I'll leave that in the in the in the maestro's hands. Do not fear, our Lord says, and again, do not fear. And although each of our journeys is unique to ourselves, yet we know we have Christ in our company and we have the support and fellowship one with another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with you. Good thing. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with everyone. Peace be with everyone. Peace be with everybody. Peace be with you, everybody. is particular to this week and we'll have some reflection of the, the readings for this, for this Sunday. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We lift our hearts and souls to you, Lord God, for you made creation out of nothing and in Abraham you called a people to be your own. You crafted a destiny for your children from the barrenness of despair and the wilderness of sin. You made an everlasting covenant that bound you and humanity to be with one another forever. In Jesus, you made a new covenant that embodied humankind's full presence before you and your full presence before humankind. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Uniting God, you bind yourself to us in Christ's death, and you bind us to yourself in Christ's resurrection. In him we are dead to sin and alive to you. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this meal in his memory, that we might be a ransomed, healed, restored, and forgiven people, delivered from the curse of slavery, and that this bread and wine may be for us, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of my this is my blood of the new covenant to shed for you and for many for the remembrance for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Jealous God, you want us to yourself, and you teach us to shape all our loves as ways of loving you. Give your consolation to all who live with no peace, but only a sword. Dwell with those who find their household divided, son against father, mother against daughter, and any who find it hard to love you and to cherish their family members also. Restore your church that it may discover you on the way across 
and find its life by losing it for your sake. Until the day when you are the joy of our desire and we the joy of yours, when every eye shall behold you and every tongue confess you as Lord, one and holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will give for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Amen. Prayer, um, particular to this Sunday, to follow communion. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the hymn, which again will be um, um, displayed with subtitles available, is O Praise Ye the Lord.
And if I might just uh, mention before the blessing um, that uh, just gone out of my head what I was going to say, but with the church being open now for individuals to come and pray, do feel very welcome if you are able to and feel confident to um, come and visit. Um, I've just installed an, another little help to us as we keep the thing properly clean. So there are some little tabs um, signposted on the entrance table. And if you sit on one of the chairs in church, please leave one of those tabs on the, on the chair so we'll know to clean it later in the day. And the handles and so on are cleaned regularly as well. Um, but it's lovely to see people availing themselves of that and clearly very appreciative of doing so. Um, there's also in church printed copies of um, our weekly letter of the Bible readings for each day um, and copies of the, the sermon, the homily as well. So feel welcome to pick those up or of course give a copy to somebody who isn't online would be grateful to be kept in touch in that way. Um, well, Tuto's lying down and grooming himself, so I'll leave him in peace. So Mary will gather him up, join me in the, in the benediction, the blessing. There we are. Thank you. So, a little blessing from, a little Tuto'd blessing from Tuto the cat. There we are. And um, thank you for being part of this service today. And thank you for all the continuing prayers that we make one for another. So, so important. We must hope that I think in July, there will be indications from the government that we can begin to gather for worship, although quite what restrictions that will entail won't be clear just yet. But as you will see, if you come into the church building, we've already tried to imagine and put into place the furnishings in such a way that it would accommodate the present um, social distancing and, and other requirements. Now may the Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And I think finishing this service, if you are um, uh, accessing it on Zoom, and if you want to hang around, no obligation, but you'd be very welcome um, to join us for a short time of conversation, of fellowship, of um, catching up. And um, Gary, will magically uh, send us into I think randomly arranged breakout rooms as they're called but it's not quite as exciting or alarming as that sounds <laughs>